Hey guys, so today I'm filming a quick little get ready with me. I actually was um, at a drugstore the other day and they actually had the entire Wet n Wild Flight of Fantasy collection. They had like everything, but I didn't pick up everything. I kind of got a good cross section though of the collection just so I can try it out, let you guys know what I think. I know that um, they're Gothic graphic collection, like the last big collection they came out with, had some definite hits and misses. A bunch of other people tried that one out, so I didn't test it out myself, but I've seen no one else really, at least that I tend to follow, cover this collection yet. So I thought it was really, really pretty. I thought the concept was really interesting. So I figured I would pick up a few things. First, I'm gonna show you guys what I picked up and then we're going to get into the get ready with me. Um, obviously, I'm going to be mixing in other products because it's definitely not like a full face of all wet and wild. So the first thing I grabbed was this. It's a really hard to see the shiny packaging but this is from their pro brush line and it says limited edition and this is a blush brush this looks gorgeous it's really really pretty this brush is way better feeling than the other brushes that they recently came out with the um all white collection i don't think i have one here oh i have a small one these ones this feels so much nicer. You've got just a nice purple metallic, and then this feels very, very soft. Usually I use a very large blush brush, but this one's much, much smaller, and I've actually been looking for something like this that can really concentrate the color. And honestly, with the shape of this, you can probably use this to contour as well. So this is incredibly soft. It is much softer than their other brushes, actually. This one was, I believe, $7.99, which is more expensive than their other brushes, but this feels very similar to my Real Techniques brushes. The other things I picked up was their Perfect Pout Lip Scrub. I'll be honest, I don't necessarily love watermelon scents and flavors, but this one I had to get just because of the name. They named it Pecker Up. You know what I'm thinking, and I know what you're thinking, and I'm not thinking of birds. Really? You name a lip scrub pecker up? Yeah, I, I just, the name was too good. I had to have it. As soon as I saw it, I showed it to my husband in the store. He doubled over laughing, and I was like, you know I'm buying this just because of the name. He was like, yeah, I know. So I'm excited to try that. Um, it's, it looks like it's going to be a good lip scrub, so we'll see. Um, I also got their baked blush. They had three of these and these were gorgeous. They had like a coral one, a really deep purple one, and then this one. I of course went for the lighter pink because that's why I tend to go for in blushes. And this one's called Don't Flutter Yourself and it's very cute. Then I got a Color Icon Lip Gloss and I don't think I actually own any Color Icon Lip Glosses. And this one is in the shade Featherless. I thought it was really pretty. Then I picked up an eyeliner and I've heard kind of mixed things about their limited edition eyeliners. So I wanted to give it a shot. This one's called Winged and Wild. And I've honestly not used one of the Wet n Wild Liquid Eyeliners since I was in high school. Like I had one of these in black of course but I like use the crap out of that eyeliner I used it constantly so last thing I picked up from this collection is one other color icon eyeshadow quads this is in the shade flock party and um, I thought the colors were really pretty it has a burgundy a gold a little highlight and kind of like a little peachy shade in there so I wanted to try this also I haven't tried any of the new color icon quads since they changed to this packaging so I wanted to give that a shot I'm going to start out by priming my face I'm trying out the Urban Decay quick fix complexion prep priming spray which I haven't tried yet Ooh, really nice mist, and it smells like coconut. We know how I love my coconut scents. So for a foundation, I'm using this one. This is the Wet Mild Mega Cushion Foundation. It says an SPF 15 in it. I have mixed feelings about this. I got a couple months ago when it first came out, and I tried it, and I hated it. Absolutely hated it. 
kept trying it, kept trying it. I'm like, I love what I'm wild. There has to be something wrong with what I'm doing. I was definitely applying it way too full coverage and I was applying it after applying lots of thick skincare. It was breaking up, it was separating on me and I wasn't using the setting spray. Applying this thinly because it is a cushion, it's meant to give light coverage and then using a setting spray a la Urban Decay All Nighter and this wears much, much better on me. I would not recommend this for super oily skin, but for moderately oily skin like I have, you definitely can get away with it. Just know that you're going to have that very plump, dewy skin look and you're definitely going to want to set it or it will separate. Oh, and just so you guys know, I use the shade 106A Light Ivory. I've been very, very delicate with my skin over the past few days because my skin is breaking out like crazy. Thankfully, these are all healing now, but it was really bad a few days ago. I think I figured out why. I have two theories. Well, I have three theories. Theory number one is I've been wearing too much full coverage foundation for too long, all day long, which is highly possible. Theory number two is that my stress levels have been ridiculously high, so that could be causing it. Um, I was thinking it was the biotin in my vitamins, but I added those back in after several days of not using them, and my skin actually got better when I started using my vitamins again, so I don't think it's a biotin. And my third thing was I had been doing intermittent fasting, but I went a little too hard on it, a little too fast, and I was doing a 24 split, which is fasting for 20 hours and then eating for four hours. And I don't think, based on where my breakouts were around my mouth and right here on my forehead, I don't think my hormones um, reacted too kindly to that. So I actually backed it off the past couple days where I'm doing a standard 16-8 split slash a um, occasionally a nine or ten hour eating window depending on how I'm feeling and it's actually helping a lot so my skin is clearing up a bunch so I'm thinking that it was a combination of stress and the fasting doesn't give a whole ton of coverage but I do like the finish it has it's very soft all right, now I'm going in with my Tarte Shape Tape in the shade Fair Neutral. Let's cover this mess up. You know what's funny? I just realized I was actually going to do my eyeshadow first in case I had major fallout. And then I didn't think and just started putting on foundation. So we're, we're doing my face first and then we'll do the eyeshadow. I'm putting just a little bit of this on my eyelids as well. All right, I'm going to go ahead and set my concealer with a little bit of the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores Pressed. I need to get a full size of this because I love it. It is fantastic. Wow, my under eyes look light. All right, so I'm going to be right back. I'm going to go do my eyebrows real quick. I'm using my Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow in taupe, of course. My eyebrows are all done. Um, I'm feeling a little ghosty right now with how pale my face is compared to my chest and neck right now. So I am going to go ahead and bronze up a little bit and I'm using my Wet n Wild Color Icon in Ticket to Brazil. This poor thing is very, very worn, though it looks like I've barely used it. And I'm just grabbing a giant fluffy brush. And just for doing my cheekbones, like I will seriously just pinch the brush and bring it in and then blend it out. Just because sometimes it's way easier than coming in with like two or three different blushes. And I just kind of want a soft bronze look, not a super harsh contour. I'm going to take that into my hairline as well. And then I'm just like taking a little bit of bronzer on my nose. Just because if you're actually getting hit by the sun, your nose is getting a little bit tanned. It just makes sense. 
All right, let's go ahead and break into this blush because it is super pretty. All right, here is the blush. This does not open all the way, which I don't love. I found that um, wet and wet containers tend to be very fragile. So I'd rather open all the way, but here it is. And it has this adorable little hummingbird on it. I'm going to go ahead and see. Yep, that's what I thought. It had this heavy glitter on it, and that is definitely an overspray. So just so you know, if you don't like the super heavy glitter, it was just an overspray. Kind of drives me nuts. I wish companies wouldn't do that, but I just want to swatch this blush real quick. Wow, that is shimmery. That is very shimmery and very pink. So uh, we're going to see how this goes. All right, I'm going to use the brand new blush brush we got. And I did get most of that overspray off. Wow, that is like pink, pink yellow. Okay, we're knocking a lot of that off because that's going to be heavy. That is, that is pink and that is shiny. Wow. Um. Okay, we're gonna see how the other cheek goes. Okay, so I like the brush. I like the brush a lot. Um, it's very good for a concentrated application. However, I am not feeling this blush. I mean, that is, it looks like it should be a highlighter. It's that shimmery and shiny. And that's a look I want like up here, not like down here. And I tend to change up my blush placement. Sometimes I'll have it here, sometimes I'll have it here, sometimes I'll have it here. I change it up a lot. Um, this is very shiny. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of this blush. Um, the color is really pretty. The shimmer is kind of meh. So, um, yeah, I, I probably would not use this a whole lot. All right, moving on. Let's move on to eyes. So I'm going to go ahead and use the Flock Party palette. So here's the palette, and this one opens fully, which is very nice. Very pretty colors. I'm gonna go ahead and swatch these. Okay, there's the eyelid shade. That looks more orange than burgundy. That's interesting. It looks burgundy in the pan, but that looks orange on my hand. Here's the gold. Then you have the peachy transition shade. That one's actually really pretty. And then the brow bone or a highlight shade, which doesn't really show up. Wow. Um, okay. So finger swatches obviously do not tell the whole story. Things can look totally different on your hand versus on your face. So we'll see how it goes. I'm taking a big fluffy brush. This is my Sigma tapered E40 brush. I love this brush. And I'm just going into that transition shade. This actually reminds me a lot of um, orange soda in the Soft Glam palette. It's a very similar shade. This one's almost a bit more neon -y though. This is pretty though. I really, really like orangey shadows. And this one's going on fairly nicely. All right, next I'm going to go into this burgundy shade. Hopefully it looks burgundy, it's supposed to be burgundy. And I'm going to put this on my outer corner. Okay, see that looks better on my eyelid than it did on my hand, like way better on my eyelid. I'm only taking this halfway across my lid because I want to put that gold in there as well. This shadow is actually pretty hard. You kind of have to dig into it a little to get any on your brush. While well, the matte was like very fluffy and kind of had a good amount of kickback, kick up, kickback, whatever you want to call it. 
I'm just adding a bit more of this burgundy shade in that transition in the crease and blending it out. You really won't see that a whole lot once my eyes are open, but it makes me feel better. And we're going to go into this gold shade that they said was for your crease. Um, don't pay attention to the directions on these little palettes. Like, just please don't. <laughs> because putting that on my eye, that does not look gold. Looks gold in the pan. On my eye, it's bronze. Which is very interesting because the burgundy is really more of a light raspberry shade. So I kind of have a raspberry sherbet thing going on here. And to be honest, I'm not mad at it. I kind of like it. Okay, yeah, that's really pretty actually. So I'm going to take that same shade just right underneath. I'm just using the same brush. And then I'm going back in with the burgundy just on the tip of that brush. You can also use a finer, more detailed brush if you want, but I kind of want something a little softer and smokier today. And I'm just blending in that. Okay, we're going to call this raspberry because it looks burgundy in the pan, but that is, that is flat out raspberry. Now I'm grabbing a small detailer brush and I'm going in with this brow bone shade. I'm just going to use this to highlight my inner corner. That's pretty. Okay, highlight my inner corner. This is really pretty. I do have to say that Wet n Wild tends to excel when it comes to highlight shades and their little palettes like this. These highlights are so freaking pretty. Like, that's really cute. I'm just going to pop a tiny bit under here because I'm still all about the sparkly problem. And I don't care if people don't like it, I do. Most of you probably like it actually. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I actually really am impressed with the way this eye look turned out. I actually like it so far. I like the palette. Like honestly, I would not have named this Flock Party. I would have named this Raspberry Sherbert because Obviously, I know that doesn't fit with the theme, but this is very pretty. So, I'm almost wishing I had gotten like the burgundy colored eyeliner, but I didn't. I actually got their green eyeliner. This is in the shade Winged and Wild. And I'm probably going to screw this up so bad because it has been forever since I have used one of these teensy tiny little loose liquid eyeliner brushes. But. Here's the color. I'm just spreading it out so you can see it better. It's this really pretty, like, dark olive -y military green, which is one of my favorite colors when it comes to, like, clothes and stuff, so I'm really excited to use this. Hopefully I don't, like, royally screw this up. I need a closer mirror to do this. Actually, before I do this, let me curl my eyelashes real quick because if I don't and my evil evil eyelash curler takes off my eyeliner and I actually get it right, I will be so mad. If any of you have found eyelash curlers that don't like pull your eyeliner right off, let me know because I would love to have one. All right, let's go in with this thing. Okay, I'm actually loving the shade. I'm worried though, because this feels so wet. <laughs> oh, I forgot how easy it was to do a wing with this type of liner. You know what I will say is usually with liner like this, really watery formulas tend to feather on me really bad. This isn't feathering at all, like at all. Have I been sleeping on these eyeliners? Like, have I been doing something bad? Because that wing is crazy sharp. Holy cow. Yeah, okay, I'm happy. Oh my gosh. It's like the best wing I've done in a couple weeks, let's be real. Um. Yeah, okay, other eye. 
okay, see, I knew there was no way that could happen again. That was totally a fluke. Because I couldn't be as good as this one. No. Because, like, this one's curved, this one's straight. It's just, it couldn't happen. That that would be way too much magic eyeliner juju to have in one video. I had to screw up one eye. It had to happen, you guys. Okay, those are not even close to matching at all. Just gonna thicken this one up a bit, which it kills me to thicken up the pretty one, but there we go. That's a bit better. I, I knew it. I shouldn't have said anything because my eyeliner look was just too good. But this eyeliner is really pretty. <gasps> that color looks so good. I mean, it's not super opaque, but it's pretty good for a couple dollar eyeliner. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do my lashes with my Benefit Roller Lash. Okay, I'm really loving this eye look. I didn't think I was going to, honestly, after the blush, I was kind of worried. I was thinking, uh-oh, this whole video is downhill from here. But no, definitely impressed. Not the eye look I expected, looking at the palette, thinking burgundy and gold, and it ends up being like, peach and raspberry deliciousness, but I really shouldn't try to talk while putting on mascara. And I'm leaving my bottom lashes alone today because I definitely prefer the look of a heavier top lash with no bottom lashes most of the time. So the last things we have to try out so far are the lip scrub. And here's what it looks like. It's a super bright pink. Ooh, okay, this smells, you guys know um, watermelon airheads candy? That's what this smells like. It smells like watermelon airheads. Okay, I'm a fan. So I'm going to get a little bit of this. This is very, very thick. Um, you guys, this tastes like watermelon. You probably shouldn't eat this, but it tastes like watermelon. You should probably also sugar scrub your lips before doing your foundation, but you know, that would just make way too much sense. Ooh, not bad at all, actually. Normally, I don't use sugar scrubs. I either use like a clean toothbrush or a washcloth or something like that. But that actually worked out really well. My lips feel nice and smooth. All right, so the last thing to try out is the Color Icon Lip Gloss and the shade, but where's the shade again? God, why does it make the shade so hard to find? Oh, Featherless. It's on the bottom, of course, because that would make sense. There's a packaging better, so you can see it better. That is really cute with the little hummingbirds on it. So here is this color. It has just a flat wand applicator. And here's what it looks like. It's kind of a soft peachy tone. Now this was kind of a gamble because these soft peachy tones, especially in glosses, can look really rough on me. So we'll see. Usually they will sink into my lip lines and look a little funky. The coloring's a little patchy. It is settling in my lines a little bit, so it's a little bit more orange there. It's actually really pretty. It pairs well with the eyes, and honestly, it's probably about the nicest looking shade of a peach lip gloss that I've tried yet. It doesn't look weird on me, which is very unusual because most peach lip glosses look, frankly, like crap on me. So this looks good. Um, I probably won't wear this a whole lot by itself, I don't think, just because the pigmentation isn't even enough for my liking, but I would probably wear this over another lipstick. Like I would wear this over a soft pink or a darker nude or even um, like a matte peach lipstick. That's really pretty though. Like it's, it's almost there. Like the color is beautiful. The formula, is a little off. It's like the color pigment is almost separating from the oil or whatever is in it that's making it glossy. So it looks like it's separating on your lips. But the color's there. It's like the formula just 
needs a tweak for this particular shade at least. All right guys, so that is everything that we tried. Um, as far as each individual thing, the lip scrub I really liked. I love the Flock Party eyeshadow palette. I think it's a really, really pretty. Um, just don't go off of the way the shades look because the way they look in the palette and the way they look on your eye are totally different. But I really do like this. I think it's very pretty. Um, I'm kind of in the middle on the lip gloss. Again, love the color, a bit matte on the formula. The blush, uh, a little too glittery for my taste as far as blush goes. Now, if this was a highlighter, excellent. But as far as blush, like I've got like glitter all the way down here. So I'm not a huge fan of this blush, unfortunately. So I hope that this video was helpful for you guys. I hope that it helped you kind of decide if you want to pick up anything from this collection or not. Um, let me know down below. Is there anything else from the collection that you might have tried that you either loved or hated? I would love to know. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have it yet, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You can also keep up with me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat. I'm pretty much everywhere and all the links for those are down below as well. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you again very, very soon. Bye.